straight away, doggy. Salt looking. Check the weather last night. Looks like we're below 70 mile an hour southwesterly. So it's going to be risky for a biscuit, but in terms of being able to fish it, safety wise, it's fine. But um, I've checked it now, it's saying south of westerly 22. So it might just be one of those sessions where we have two hours to get off. Get down, we have two hours to get off. We won't run out for time. I need some bait. If this weather's going to blow up, I need to make sure I've got some bait. So that's what we're going to be doing this morning. If I can get two rods out on bottom, I will do. But it's like one of those sessions where basically it might be just too rough to fish on bottom. But these are the best sessions. So we'll, we'll see how we get on. It's, it's four, just about half four in the morning. Lock tides are 20 to 6. I want to be down there and tackle up. I'm down, I think it's paid dividends coming down to be fair. It's a bizarre wind, I don't know what wind direction it is, I don't think the weather forecast knows what it is. But I've got no wind on me at all either down here. It's slightly sheltered. So I suggest it's got a bit more west in it. But it's not it's not as rough as you'd think. It's bizarre, honestly. Anyway, it's enough chat. I'm gonna get a red tackle up for bottom. I'm gonna have one ready for feathers when it gets light, and then uh, we'll take it from there. So I've just got tackled up, I've got one rod out for tow, I'm just going to tackle the rod up for feathers, but first I've put a you know, standard tow rig on, the pulley rig style. Um, I'll show you it rigging a bit, but I've got one here actually, but it's because it's still a bit dark, I'm not going to be able to show you. So I'm going to get that, I'm, I'm fishing with one rod on bottom at the minute, I'm going to tackle the other rod up that's just there on rod rest for spinning. It's just about getting light, and I've got some uh, bits of mackerel to throw in, bits of old herring here to throw in. I'll split the torch on it because it's still a bit dark and then I've got a bag of like some skeletons, some heads, what well, fish I've filleted from mackerel that we caught at Bridlington the other week. So we've got old herring from Morrison's, some old mackerel, guts, skeleton etc. I'm going to get these in before the seagulls see them. So we'll get these floating around inside. It's about an hour before low. So we'll get them thrown in, hopefully. They'll get a fish in the area. We'll see what happens. Anyway, we'll look more about the regrets. It's a simple pulley rig, really. We've got 170 pound body, about four foot. We've got 18 inches, a 100 pound wire, on a panel panel rig. We've got a circle look. Circle look. I got actually got off Amazon, but as strong as anything, believe it or not, for a catfish hook. Catfish circle up. And I've got your Barry Bass um, BMX 8 0 at the end of that. Got 300 pound swivel, Jermaine swivel. Don't use panel rig beads unless, unless you can get, sorry, pulley beads. Unless you can get somewhere big old with, because they tend to, in the tide, they tend to make it tangle up around your main line because it doesn't flow. And I've got a grip lead where Gemini. Spot, splash down on. I've got to say, I've, I've only used these on the last two sessions and they're absolutely brilliant. They're well worth spending that money on. So that then, I put, I've been putting on half a mackerel or a full mackerel or just a head. On one of my rods, I do actually have a, I've got actually a single hook uh, must have those sure to see, or just a head on. And we have luck see if there's anything on this right hand rod in a sec. So yeah, that's the rig. It's clipped up like that. I just wang it out as far as I can. I have caught tow close into the rocks as well, so sometimes 
On one red I might do a gentle lob, on another red I'll bang it out. Well I've looked at the on this rod in a sec, like I say, but that's the rig. Simple. And by the way, I'm on one of them. So all I'm gonna do is use scissors. You don't need to go full mackerel, these mackerel at the minute are fairly big to be fair. Take the fact that this one's a cut from this one this is the one I caught from Brinton. I like to just cut most of the way up there like that. So you can sink sink your barrier of aceto in there like that. Get the Flemish loop in there as well, so it seems to hang better, more truer when you clip it up. Needs a bit of persuasion sometimes. This, this mackerel still look like semi frozen. I like to use mackerel like that because I find it goes a bit sloppy sometimes. Obviously, if you're using big chunks of it like this, it's fine anyway, but generally, I take it out just before I come fish it out of the freezer, just before I come fishing when I'm frozen. I think we'll have a dogfish session somewhere in a couple of days, like dogfish bus type session. I've got a mark in mind. shelter on this mark. We'll see. So yeah, you just lash it on with elastic. I don't do anything special. Some people like to knot it and all that. I just get it lashed, put plenty on. Make sure. I think you're here about. Yeah, weather. They got weather completely wrong today. Honestly, so far they have. We've got the... We're just getting a bit of rain, actually. Um, this forecast 22 mile an hour southwesterly. Or suddenly. It's nowhere near that. It's not normally fishable in here with, with that type of rig. Well, you might get away with a six ounce lead fishing for mackerel. You, you, you can't use the bottom. You can't fish on bottom with them. I'm surprised. Got away with it. So I've just lashed that on. Get your circle up, bring that down. One. Two. Some people like to have this hang off a tag end on the Flemish loop. I don't. Well, really because it uses an extra crimp. <laughs> no point in using an extra tackle if you don't need it, it's going to get lost anyway. It's very snaggy on here, so you have to prepare the tackle losses. Make sure that can't push it comes through. Just come through, spine up mackerel, pull that down. And then you've got a nice bait like that, look. So then we'll put that in the clip, see if we can get a zoom in. I don't know what I'm looking like on camera, I don't know if you can see me. It is difficult sometimes with angle up rocks and stuff to get a decent view. That's locked into the splash down. I've done a couple of different things as well on my reels. I've took, I've took both bubble lines off them. I don't fish with a shop leader on here. I know, I know people do, but surely every time you get stuck, it snaps on shock leader knot, leaving meters and meters of shock leader, leader knocking about in water. If you've got a 60 to 80 pound shock leader on, you're gonna just be trailing line all over the place when you get stuck on here, surely. I've never had to use a shock leader off here. Obviously there's no one around me, so you don't need to, in my opinion. That's just my thought on that. Yeah, I took the level wires off to swim through my casting. It has worked, it's just obviously you've got to feed it on manually, but it's not a big deal that. So I'm going to change bait on my left hand rod. And, uh, well, it's not looking good for a fish this morning so far. We've still got a bit of time, so we'll, uh, we'll keep at it. Back to that though, with weather. I mean, it is picking the wind. I think there must be a breeze picking up out at sea somewhere because it is getting a bit choppy off here now. But the bonus about fishing on this particular mark is you're quite high up, even though the sea's fairly close to you, the rock level's quite high. And it has to be quite a rough sea to be to, to get up to back here where I'm sat. Um, but yeah, it's so unpredictable the weather. I mean this morning I looked at the forecast at 22 mile hour suddenly at four o'clock this morning, I just checked it. After last night it said that it was gonna blow southwesterly 17 and then pick up about nine o'clock. Um, to like 20, 25 mile an hour. Anyway, I've got up this morning, 22 mile an hour it's forecasting, which does then that five mile an hour at that, at that speed, it does make a difference to um, things. 
So I knew it was going to be such a go with a good fish. I come down here, I've got my head torch, I'm shutting it down into the water. I'm like, you can only a, a little bit of a splashing, not, not like a bit of a rumble, you know what I mean, from the sea. It's just very difficult sometimes for him to get the weather out, which is fair enough, but if you had a boat or something like that, it'd be a nightmare, wouldn't it? I mean, look, I'm, I'm not too far away from this mark, so I, it's not it's not a big deal if I come down and I come fish it. So I thought I'd, I'd come down, chance it. I've managed to fish. I mean, I've had a few mac a couple of mackerel, but not much has happened on the bottom so far. I think I'm going to try fill it on one rod and like body section on the other and see if, see, see if we can just get, get something, conger or something. Usually they save my blank. I mean, literally, I'm all, I'm all in for this session this morning, you know, it's per perfect. You know, tides coincide in with dawn. Um, hopefully in a couple of days we're going to get some to coincide in with dusk. But it's uh, perfect. But the sea has got a bit of a chop on it now, you can see. You know, there's a, it's splash, splashing about a bit. It's not putting much of a rumble on in front of me, because my, my wind, the wind's on my right cheek at the moment. Which suggests it's got a bit of west in it. Never mind that southerly that the pit predicted. So, I'm just hoping something turns up like really. It's, you know, I haven't put much footage together from yesterday at Porthis Scadden, but I think, I, I think I'd have I think I'd have toe picked my bait up off, off a ridge there. I was fishing for dogfish. I had a 4 BMX on, 4 Varivas BMX, it's on a 50 pound snood. Um, and I, I, I only took one mackerel mix, so I thought target dogfish, I didn't get a bite all day. Anyway, I put the, I got down to the last bait tomorrow, I think you shall bother with it, so I thought, oh, I'll put a mackerel head on. Dropped it off at Ridge, and I'm not kidding you, I only had like, it looks like an, like an uptide rod what I've got. It's for pier and rocks. It's just, it's like five five ounces of capacity casting, uh, but it's quite thick. I, I put the reel on run because I thought I'm going to be spinning. I was spinning with a single spinner on spinning rod at the side of it. Anyway, I've uh, I've just been a foot away from the rod, and next thing I know, there's line just tearing off of the reel. It was like honestly, it, the reel was on fire. <laughs> I've come over to it. I've struck at nothing. So, I mean, I'm guessing it might have picked the bait up. I'll put a picture on it in, in the snippet of this video with a mackerel head and where we're fishing at Fourth Iscadden. And so, when they pick your bait up and spit it, if you like, they've, they've got a bad habit. Well, not a bad habit. The, the, tra the trademark, you usually get two marks on, on the head. They're, they're like puncher marks. They're not like severs. They're like puncher marks. It looks like someone's gone with a nail like on that angle into the head. Um, I've only got one on that, so I'm guessing it didn't pick the bait up properly. But um, the hook hook probably were a bit small as well. But if it, obviously if it's got bait and it's gone, I'd struck and hit it. I don't think I'd have got it anyway. So in fairness to fish, it's best off it, it didn't get up because it'd have been swimming around with hooking its gob for a while. Unless obviously you managed to somehow hook it there. But I had 20 pound main line, 50 pound. I'd have had to really let it play that to get it in with skin on it and all that. It'd have probably just snapped me. So in fairness to fish, fair play, but it, were, it was just a mental moment. It was red hot, the, 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 the sea were more or less flat calm. There were people in bait that left of me on boats and stuff, but I couldn't even hook a ass. I'm not surprised if, if that's been swimming around. So, uh, yeah, that's my little story from yesterday at Porthy I did not put much footage together cause, for it because I didn't, it was just like, nothing happened, you know what I mean? Oh, I did actually catch a pollock about that big. I had a lure on that big and a pollock took it. It come off as I reeled it in though, unfortunately. Not that it matters. So yeah, see what happens this morning anyway. So I think it, I'm going to fish it for another hour and a half, I think so. Sometimes I've been picking fish up a few hours after, after low off here. Unless I start losing gear, I'm going to fish it for a bit longer. So we'll see what happens. Just put the last two baits out. Um, yeah, every time I've been reeling baits in, they've just been largely untouched. You know, even fill it, I even had fill it out, and nothing's even touched it, which is disappointing. So, I don't know whether that's a good thing. I like to think of it as a good thing. 
I like to think there's, a, there's some taupe out there and they're spooking everything else into with organic there. Look, there's been plenty of them about this morning. I think if it was just a whip mackerel, caught some more. Yeah, I like to think I like to think that it's a good sign when your baits are when your mates are coming back untouched. I think uh, if there's any taupe out there, they might, you know, the big six foot taupe coming around down there. Um, even your conger eels might be spooked by it. And your dogfish definitely will be. You can see now, as we've been down here, tides progressively, it's progressively getting rougher. Um, yeah, it's going to be time to head off in a bit. No need to panic though, we don't brush. Not when it's like this, you don't anyway. Hopefully, we get one opportunity to get a fish out before we go. Fingers crossed. That's it, I'm just going to wind this last rod in. I've already tackled one of them down, Mike. Um, just move you back a bit. It's not as not very good today at all. I've tried everything. I've been 100% with everything. The rigs, are, the rigs are working well. I'm impressed. I've gone back to pulley rigs like I showed you on camera before. I didn't do fish with running ledger before, but I couldn't cast very well on it. So I've improved my rigs. I just think it'll be the fish, that's all. We had fresh bait, you know, them splashdowns have been superb. Anyway, let's get this real big. This is getting, it's getting a bit treacherous down here now. We're gonna have to be careful. Time to go. Valley's calling for a big, big breakfast with a nice big mug of coffee. But yeah, we're uh, getting to that time now where, uh, you know, it's a big, biggish tag with the nine meter one, the nine meter record now, I think. Uh, well, no, we are. Just about 9.1 is it something today? We're a bit of wind behind it. With a couple of unfortunate ones around your legs. And you don't want to do it. Well, honestly, we've got the forecast miles, but miles out, absolutely miles out of the forecast. So, uh, yeah, let's get this back up. Well, we're in the video there now, guys. Um, I mean, it's, been, it's not been successful in terms of getting anything up bottom. I'm still laughing back over here, they don't take much catching. That's the main thing. I've got some more to go in the freezer. I've got three this morning. I only pretend it's about half hour, I'll put it in the beach because I've got a Strange enough, I'm surprised nothing turned up, me. You know, I really am. Other than that, keep safe, tight lines, and have a good one. Whee!